He's literally just fresh off the plane from San Francisco. He was in uh, Silicon Valley last week, sitting down face to face with a number of very successful tech companies and also talking to them about the EU's AI Act that was just voted upon by members of the European Parliament a couple of weeks ago in Strasbourg. So we're absolutely thrilled to have him with us physically here at the Destination Europe Summit and to hear his perspectives. We'd also like to hear what you think about what he has to say. You can use the hashtag Destination Europe Summit so you can feed your comments here into the discussion. Thierry Preton, all we need to do now is give you a big round of applause. Welcome. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Fine, but I'm not a Frenchman. I'm a European commissioner. Well, of course, you're not just a Frenchman. You're not just representing no, France, no, no, you're no, representing no, the no. European Commission. It's the first time since four years that, uh, that you're, I'm introduced as a, as a Frenchman. It's, it's you don't feel, feel good. a little bit uh, French still? No, it feels no. good. Uh, it's, uh, it's, Take uh, a seat. It's very new for me. A European man. Just like we heard earlier, Peter de Vilde very much um, in touch with his European identity and his European roots in the I previous I don't forget panel. also from, from, a, from, from a finance minister, which is much more important. <laughs> Absolutely. You've got a, a colourful, interesting background. You've sat in, in all sides of the table, so it's very and interesting. The privilege of age. The privilege of Probably. age, I know. The only, age the only one, the only <laughs> privilege. Age is experience. Age is wonderful. So Thierry Preton, EU Commissioner for the Internal Market, great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here with this uh, very important, um, we call it ecosystem, the most important. Well, it's a very important time as we said earlier, for the sector, for the tourism sector, for the travel sector. There's a lot at stake. And I don't want this talk to focus too much on the past, but obviously there was the pandemic. You were at the forefront of that as Europe opened its borders. Was there one lesson, perhaps, that the industry should take away from that? Well, first, um, it's true that um, the tourism ecosystem has been really hit hard by the pandemic. Of course, uh, no one was traveling, everything was closed. It was important to keep uh, also uh, um, employees. So we reacted very, very quickly. And uh, I think we could be proud of what we have done at uh, the European level all together with this uh, next generation EU, huge package for the first time in our history. Um, um, and a lesson learned, perhaps? And, and, and the lesson learned is that uh, everyone understood a big part of this amount came to the tourism, so everyone understood how important is the tourism for Europe. We all knew that, but it was important versus also all the other uh, ecosystems. The lesson learned is, of course, that um, we understand that uh, we are strong together, uh, even in adversity. And this is how we've been able to cope, uh, to cope with the situation. Um, we have reacted uh, uh, quickly also to, uh, to reopen, we call it reopen e e EU. Um, we invented this uh, pass, you know, to, um, to make sure that we could uh, give also security for, uh, for tourists, uh, uh, reopen the borders. By the way, it has been a success because it has been approved by 81 countries, 2.3 billion people are using it, and now yeah. it's a WHO uh, reference. And when so you I say the biggest lesson, Commissioner, was that we're better together and we worked together, do you still feel that that is the case, that is the status quo? Of course, we have done, uh, we, don't know, we have decided for the first time ever in our history that we have now a, um, a, a view of where we want the tourism be by 2030. We have, we worked on this, we have discussed, it has been approved by all member states, so we are pretty well aligned. In other words, we are, uh, of course, we all know here in this room that tourism is absolutely uh, 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 critical for, as an industry, but also for Europe, um, the largest, uh, the biggest destination in tourism. Uh, so that's really part, of course, of uh, our, 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 what we are. So, no, I, I really think that the, the, the main lesson is, again, uh, Europe is strong because we are together. And on that note of vision, what would your vision be for European tourism? That's uh, definitely also, that's another uh, lesson that we need to draw now. It's true that uh, you see for our fellow citizens, there is a before and, and after a pandemic, change their habits, 
change the habit of working, change the habit of living, and uh, also change the habit of um, tourism. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and I really think that um, we need to um, really to understand these new trends, um, which is of course more inclusive, uh, which is of course more, uh, much more um, concerned with, um, with our environment, with our cultural environment, with our ecosystems. So there's a totally new way of inventing uh, tourism um, uh, uh, related to these new aspirations of uh, uh, the new generation, but not only. And, uh, and this is really something which will change a lot. Of course, digital transition will change a lot uh, um, our way to, um, to, to build our, our offers uh, and, and, and to run uh, tourism activities. But also, this new trends is really something that I think is fascinating because it creates tremendous opportunities, but we better understand deeply what it is. And what do you think is the biggest challenge, perhaps, for the sector? Is it going green? Uh, going green, yes, it's, uh, it's important. It's important for all of us, and I know that tourism is playing a big role. Today, for, uh, for me, I see the very strong appetite for all our fellow citizens to, um, to, um, to, to, to enjoy uh, tourism activities. When I see the bookings, of course, you know this much better than me, but I think it's pretty, uh, pretty good. Huh? Uh, I'm looking for some of the experts uh, of the sectors. Uh, they're nodding. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, and then, since it's pretty impressive, for me today, I think the biggest challenge today is probably uh, skills and, um, and, 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 and people. I, I'm afraid we don't have enough um, uh, new talent to welcome uh, and to organize for this uh, um, important uh, trend that we... Um, that we will enjoy. So and what is the solution to this uh, challenge? The solution is uh, something that we need to discuss together. I, uh, I'm not a magician. Perhaps it's a, it's a topic for Nicolas Schmidt, well, your colleague. Of course, we are, we, are, we, are, we are working together with Nicolas Schmidt on, as you know, the tourism transition pathway, which is very important. It takes time. It needs also to um, reinvent probably also the, um, mm -hmm. uh, the jobs, uh, the way they were uh, probably uh, uh, designed before, um, uh, including regarding what I said be, uh, earlier, in the new way that uh, um, ecotourism, uh, maybe also uh, some more local sometime. Uh, so it really means to, 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 to have a deep thinking, and this is why we are... We, we, well, we you are mentioned deep thinking. Is there time now for deep thinking as we now go into July, August, which will be peak tourism yeah, season? But, uh, you did not wait me for, for it started already. Yeah? Well, I, mean, uh, I know that because I know all the, all the players. We were discussing a lot of this, so of course we didn't wait today. Yeah? So, uh, but that's, that's really probably the one of the big challenges that we have now, now. And of course then, you mentioned it, um, the green transition, uh, digital transition is also something extremely, extremely important. Using the right way da data, you know that we are working on the data space uh, for tourism, that's extremely important, it will be finalized very soon. You know that we are working also for, um, um, uh, I mean, um, uh, other aspects of tourism, uh, using... Um, uh, how, will, how will that change tourism as we know it? The data that you're working on. But I mean, uh, first, it gives a lot of information about uh, uh, um, uh, what kind of offer you could uh, specialize. Tourism uh, means also that you could uh, you could uh, finalize a, a product that you want for you, which is very much important. That's something totally new. The package also that you can be part of it. But it's also some security also for for the. Um, uh, for the tourists themselves, because of course uh, it will harmonize the way, for example, for short-term renting, it will harmonize the way you do it, it gives security, uh, so that's both ways. And as I mentioned earlier, Commissioner Thierry Preton, you were just in San Francisco, yeah. you were talking um, tech over there, how did that go and, and what do they think of the, the European plans to, to regulate AI? Well, well as, as you know, we don't, we don't only regulate AI. We have decided to, uh, to organize our digital space. Uh, uh, that's something also I, I worked very hard since my first day in, in, the, in the commission. Uh, our digital space was not organized at all. Some uh, were saying it was a little bit the far west, uh, especially in social media, and you know what it means. You could have some tragedy also here, so we decided to, um, to organize it. It has been uh, quite a journey, but we did it. 
with the DGA for um, uh, Data Government Act, with, with the DSA, um, Digital uh, Services Act, to organize uh, against the social networks, DMA, to have fair competition in it, uh, Data Act, uh, which will be important, including, of course, for tourism, and now, of course, AI Act. So there's five pillars to organize it. Um, it was extremely important, uh, again, to give visibility, including for business. Uh, it's important to have rules. Uh, it's important for innovation to have rules also. So now we are the first continent to have these rules. So AI is also part of it. We worked uh, uh, almost for the past three years on it. Now this AI Act has been, um, um, position has been, uh, has been adopted by the Council, position has been adopted also by the Parliament. So we, are, we started already the first uh, trailer uh, a week ago. Uh, and of course, it is a risk-based regulation. And it was important for me to, um, to explain all this. Of course, we are uh, the biggest continent uh, of the free world uh, in terms of the, in digital, one and a half bigger than the US, uh, which is very important. It gives us, of course, responsibilities. So uh, it was my, um, my, my job to explain, of course, to all the players that, um, of course, everyone is welcome. Uh, we are an open continent, but these are our rules, and now these rules will be the law. And uh, I help these companies, not only US, by the way, Europeans, uh, um, and, and elsewhere, including in Asia, to understand w exactly what are our laws and how to, uh, to be prepared, because, as you know, for the DSA, it will be enforceable um, uh, on August 25th. And for the, uh, for the AI Act, which is a risk-based, again, regulation, um, uh, we are hope that to, fi to be able to finalize a trilogue uh, in Q3. And you hope that it won't be outdated by the time it becomes law, the AI? No, because this is again a, a, an horizontal uh, risk base, so it cannot be updated. You could, you could always plug, this is why everything we do in digital, it's horizontal, and you can plug in then a new, uh, um, let's say, delegated act if we see something new happen, because you're right, uh, technology could evolve and we may see new risk. Uh, of course, we don't want to, uh, to regulate everything, but if we see a risk which will have to be uh, regulated that we don't anticipate now, we will always be able to plug uh, a new, um, new uh, dedicated uh, uh, act. So we have the rules set in stone, and your job will then be the enforcer. Yeah. That will also be a challenge. Well, I'm already the enforcer, uh, the enforcer of, uh, on the internal market, and that's why that's a very good question, because we design this not ac as competition tools. We design this as internal market tools. In other words, uh, I'm already the enforcer of the inter internal market. You cannot do uh, everything. Of course, the internal market is big. Uh, that's a, a tremendous uh, uh, strength uh, uh, of Europe. But of course, uh, you cannot do everything. You cannot import everything. If you, have, if you import toys, uh, there's some rules that these toys are not dangerous uh, for children. Uh, and if not, of course, we will enforce. So uh, I'm already the enforcer of the internal market. And these rules in the, in the digital space are ex ante. So that's an ex ante regulation. In other words, to be able to enjoy the capacity to benefit of the biggest digital market of the world, you need to follow some rules to, uh, to, uh, to enter. By the way, see what I said, if I take the analogy of car industry, in Europe, we are driving uh, on the right side of the road. So if you build Except a car, in Ireland. if you but <laughs> if you a continental Europe, if we if we build, if we uh, uh, if you you have other cars, you need to change. But my job is to explain this, and then it is a regulation uh, and an enforcement again ex ante. And what about companies who are threatened by these rules and they're threatening to leave Europe because of the amount of burdensome reg uh, legislation? No one. No one, of course, because it's the biggest digital market of the world. So no one can afford. It's one and a half bigger than the one in the US. No one can afford not to be. And we welcome everybody. It's true that um, um, maybe you mentioned Sa uh, Sam Altman, he, uh, he, but he told me that, uh, that uh, it was misinterpreted. So he changed his tweet and he said, I love the regulation, we will follow, by the way, including our own watermarking, which is probably normal. I've been, as you, as you mentioned, a CEO myself. I will never say I don't want to enter into this market because it's too much uh, difficult for me to follow the rules. Uh, rules are rules. Uh, politicians are here to make uh, uh, the rules to secure when we believe it's important uh, uh, the way our fellow citizens are living in this space or that space. 
and companies are here to follow the rules, and they will. Don't worry. No one will leave. No one. <laughs> okay. And by the way, it's good for. And by the way, it's good for innovation too. Again, uh, since you mentioned it, when I was a CEO, I operated in uh, more than 100 countries, and there was, of course, we had different rules, and I all always told to my uh, uh, to my uh, um, uh, employees. We need to be good citizens in every country on this planet, and not to change the rules and to say to a government, you have bad rules, change it. You have to be a good citizen, including when you are CEO. So I know that uh, uh, they're thinking like me, because the all CEOs are thinking the same way. Let's see, and later we'll have the opportunity to speak to Glenn Fogel, the CEO of Booking.com. But regarding... I'm sure, I'm sure he's uh, he's with me, well, right, Glenn? Voila. It's good to be a good and you citizen. Will be, and you will be, <laughs> yeah. and you are. Commissioner Thierry Preton, what about the tourism sector and the travel sector, the role that AI can play in oh. their future? What message would you have perhaps to them? That's a very, that's a very Bearing in mind that the majority are SMEs as well. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's a very, very important question. This is why, by the way, you know, when we speak about AI, we basically speak about three things. Data, algorithm, and computing power. So that's why we really want to have a, 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 a data space for tourism, to make sure that we organize as well. Um, who owns these data? How to organize this data space? Uh, it's extremely important. This is why uh, we, um, we want to, to finalize this data space for tourism. Using this data will be a fantastic and, uh, advantage, of course, for everyone, and especially for the tourism industry, including, by the way, to, um, uh, that's the second phase, uh, to uh, uh, develop some specific algorithm focused on, to on tourism. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and this will be, of course, part of the, uh, of the job of tourism entities, but also other services companies. And then you need computing power. And uh, you know that in Europe, with your Euro, Euro HPC, we have developed the largest uh, uh, um, HPC, HPC for supercomputers, uh, high-performance computers, uh, uh, the, the largest infrastructure in the world, which uh, uh, will allow big companies, small companies, to have access to this computing power to develop also their algorithm uh, and their, their training, of, again, data on the specific tourism algorithm to develop specific activities. So yes, Europe is and will be a fantastic uh, place to um, uh, um, invent new AI application, especially for tourism. We are the first tourism uh, destination of the world. So we are the one generating the largest, biggest number of data in tourism on this planet. So it's very important now to develop these new applications and with all these, uh, let's say, uh, uh, rules that we have put in place, and it's very important again. Huh? As a CEO, I could tell you that it's extremely important to know, to have rules, they will stay, but to have now, finally, visibility. So uh, then uh, your last comment, including SMEs, you're absolutely right. SMEs are extremely, extremely important. That's uh, extremely important uh, um, uh, for, for, for the tourism ecosystem. So here we need to, uh, to, uh, to see how we could support, help, including in the digital transition, including to use, by the way, these new tools. Uh, we are working now on a dedicated uh, package on, 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 on SMEs. I think it will be for uh, next fall that we will uh, present it. It's extremely important. It will uh, cover a lot of issues that uh, SMEs have uh, in the tourism industry, including late payment, including many things that hopefully will have less burden also uh, uh, less administrative burden and many other things. Okay, and what's your take on short-term rentals? How can they be better managed? No, you know, I don't want to go, uh, this is what I said, uh, we discussed at the beginning of our discussion. Uh, it's part also of the new way to make tourism. So, um, and I see that for, the, for example, in countryside, it's, uh, some, it could be a very nice uh, offer. So I don't want to uh, here to say it's good or it's bad. This is something that is developing. So we need to, um, to follow this, um, but here also uh, we need to make sure that we could have the quality, that we could have, this is why we will have also some specific data here and, 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 and a specific regulation, we're finalizing it uh, for uh, short-term rentals, uh, which will be finalized uh, 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 before the end of this year, 
and then available for the sector, um, giving more visibility for the sectors, giving more security also for the users, and uh, and also being able to to develop it using this uh, this data. But I and, uh, but I really think that this is something which exists. So we need to take this in consideration, but organize it a little bit through data is probably one way to do it. And Commissioner Pretzon, what about the geopolitical situation in Europe? It's of course extremely volatile, the sector very concerned about the impact uh, the war in Ukraine has had and the, the sanctions of course. What would you say to them on that regard? Well, I mean, this is our world. Huh? We cannot, um, not only we cannot change it, but uh, we know that uh, these um, tensions um, are and will play an important role, including in tourism, of course. I mean, we see this, uh, needless to say, with, uh, with Russia. Huh? Uh, um, we saw this maybe a little bit with, uh, with China, which is a very big uh, uh, an important country in terms of tourism. So we hope that everything will come back to normal with China. I know that uh, we had some uh, reduction of the, of, of the number of tourism, but we are welcoming them, of course. Um, uh, but but yes, you're 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 absolutely right. That's really something that um, that uh, we have to uh, to take in consideration. For us, um, it means also that I mean we are, we are the first global destination for tourism in the world, and uh, and we know also that for our 450 million inhabitants, Europe continues to offer a lot of capacity in tourism. And, and which is maybe not yet um, totally um, uh, exploited. So I think that's also something that will be uh, good. Not only, uh, we don't want to, 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 to close uh, everything and, and, and to stay between us. But, um, but yes, we have, uh, we have this war. This war is definitely changing a lot of things. Uh, we, as you know, uh, we said uh, clearly at the Commission, um, and in Europe, that uh, we organize ourselves to support Ukraine as much as uh, uh, as we can, and we organize it uh, on the long term because we, of course, we could have good news, but we see over the past event that there's some. It's always difficult to predict what happened uh, with our uh, big uh, neighbor, uh, and, uh, and 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 that's why we uh, will do everything we can to continue to support, uh, to support Ukraine um, against this uh, um, terrible aggression. And this continent has lost a lot of Russian tourists, of course. Flows have dropped by 90%. Yes, it's true that Russia is a big country, 143 million inhabitants. Uh, it's not the biggest country in the world huh, in terms of population. Huh? Uh, uh, it is uh, 10 times uh, smaller than uh, than China uh, or India, uh, so we have a lot of other uh, uh, potentiality. Uh, uh, but, but of course, uh, we know that um, when um, Vladimir Putin decided to um, launch this um, terrible aggression uh, to um, against Ukraine, we had to uh, we had to react, and and we did. And as you mentioned, and as we're hearing today, Europe is a leader for tourism. And we have, of course, uh, the Schengen area. We have Rome, like at home, to make life easier when you're traveling. But of course, there's room for improvement when it sure. comes to getting a Schengen visa and the availability of, as well of cross-border train connections. How do you think these issues can be fixed? Yes, no, that's a never-ending fight. Huh? That's a never-ending fight. We can still improve. We did it a lot. But I know that we need to continue. I don't want to enter into details, but too many details, but uh, uh, everything we, we do to smooth, including pass, including transition pass, including we do it. I just mentioned that we, we have been able to, um, to put in place this, um, this COVID certificate, this pass. So we learned a lot how to make things more, much more easy using do, uh, digital. So I know that we are not at the end of the process, but we are working hard and, and, uh, and we will continue to enhance the fluidity uh, uh, within Europe, because this is uh, what makes tourism attractive, of course. And do you think we can go green on this continent and reach the ambitious goals and stay competitive? We have to. We have to. There's no options. No options. And it's true that it's a challenge, but we will be green. There's no other options. That's, of course, um, the goal of, um, of uh, our generation and the generation to come. We will have to. But also, and I keep saying this very often, it's not while restricting uh, our movement or, or our consumption 
that uh, we will get our green. Of course, we need to make sure that we can save energy, but it is thanks to um, innovation, thanks to technology, uh, thanks to science, that we will do it. So in such a huge transition, which is uh, in a way a revolution. But family businesses are overwhelmed. Family businesses, SMEs, they're overwhelmed. Yes, but, but, but it's part of the ecosystem. We will not do things only for big companies. When I'm saying that, it's, it's, it's of course that I'm, I'm a strong believer that, yes, I'm just leaving, I, I was before you, uh, uh, this meeting, I was uh, in a meeting with uh, the um, uh, Clean Hydrogen Alliance. We were discussing how, how hydrogen will change also, our way of uh, movement. Uh, uh, but many things will happen. Many things will happen, and, 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 and I'm confident, but I know it's, it's, it's quite a journey. It will require also a lot of fundings, uh, a lot of energy, but we are here for that. And next year, of course, we have European parliamentary elections. Yes. There will be a new administration in place. So what is your plan? My plan is to, um, to work uh, until the last day, and then, uh, and, then, and then we'll see. You know, uh, I never made in my life plan for myself, but when I'm uh, when when I'm in, in uh, when I, I, I'm um, I'm in service, I work uh, with full energy. That's what I'm trying to do. So I will do it till the last day, and then we'll see. And what about the sector, the tourism sector? What do you think should be the plan for the next couple of years for that in the new administration? Well, we have a vision now. We have a global vision that we put in place. We share the vision. Uh, the ambitions, the first time in our history, it was good, it is really something I wanted to do together with all the ecosystem. So we have the plan, we have the vision, we have the plan, but now, like always in life, uh, execution uh, will make the difference. So I really hope that now for the next, uh, the next commission, executing our vision will be the challenge and will be the objective. And just back to the here and now, or summer season, in just a couple of weeks, everyone on this continent will be on the move. Is the continent ready for this? Are our airports ready? Our infrastructure? Yes, I really think so. Yes, I really think that uh, uh, everybody is very excited for that. Everybody is waiting. Um, uh, uh, yes, I really think that we are we are, we are ready. Uh, I, when I see the forecast, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, I was I was astonished, but it's it's very good news. So we all have to be ready. But you but remember last including, summer, including by the way, again for. Uh, skills and, um, and that's uh, that's why uh, coming back to what I said, is if I have one, let's say, not concern but one point of uh, attention, it is really to um, to be able to um, to uh, to hire and welcome the, the the people that we will need to to uh, to, to serve uh, the tourists. So we won't have images this summer on our screens of long queues at airports, strikes by air traffic controllers, people not getting access to car rentals. Hotel rooms full. Oh, that's, that's, uh, uh, but you will have also the image of uh, tourism uh, going in the countryside, uh, working with our kids, uh, being on the beach. You can see the two sides of the coin, and I, 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 the one I describe is more important. The one you describe, or oh, you describe it and describe, uh, uh, you, 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 you fear maybe, hopefully it will not happen, but I know that everyone is working extremely hard for that. Okay, just one final question. What about yourself? Where will you be going on holidays or what will you be thinking alors, about when you go I'm on holidays? Do, usu usually what I'm doing, alors, I, li I, love, uh, I don't take too much vacation, uh, but there's something that I do every summer. I'm going for one week or, or eight days, I'm going to walk in a part of France that I like, which is totally a desert, uh, which is La Creuse. <laughs> <laughs> You see, they're laughing, and it's true. It's true because I don't meet anyone except cause. I love it, and you can turn off your mobile phone and disconnect from. And the I get a lot of ideas when I'm working, but I need to work after five, six, seven hours. Then the ideas are starting to come. So that's that's what I'm doing every day. Great, Commissioner Thierry Breton. Thank you so much for being with us here at the Destination Europe Summit and here on Euronews. A round of applause, please. Thank you.